Well, hi there, I'm Noah Bradley. This is Handmade House TV. And on today's episode, we're gonna talk about some of the first steps you can do in order to gain experience and confidence in order to move forward in building your log cabin. So stay tuned. Well, all right, once again, thank you for tuning in here today. And this past week, I got a, a really nice uh, email from a young man. And I get, I get an inquiry like this may, maybe every week or, or every other week type thing. And uh, generally, I'll take the time of uh, properly responding. But I thought I would create a video to kind of a, uh, maybe do a better job than what I can through pecking away on a keyboard in order to, to answer the same question over and over again. Uh, and if you don't mind, I, I'm just going to kind of read this email to you and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. It says, uh, I just came across your Handmade Houses website and I'm very interested in everything you do. Uh, my experience is very limited. Uh, I spent six months as a Mason's helper at a historic uh, masonry restoration company. I spent another six months working uh, in project management for a local construction company. Well, I, I can say right there, that's, that's a tremendous experience. Uh, that's, that's really great. Um, I, I, I recommend everybody to, to do that as much as possible to, uh, if you don't have any, if you're concerned, you don't have any experience in building a house and you're young and you wanna, you know, to test, test the waters a little bit, you can't beat working for another construction firm uh, where you actually get paid to learn the craft. And there's a lot of construction companies out there that are that are good, hardworking uh, individuals who know the basics of their way of doing something. Uh, and there's just there's something about the the you know they're, maybe they're not on the same path as handmade houses. Uh, I doubt it very seriously if they know uh, half of what I, I can offer you as far as sharing with you. Uh, but nonetheless, the ability to to just get up at a set time, report to a place, to put in an eight hour day to, of, of getting dirty, of accomplishing something at the end of the day to figure out where to go get the materials, of what tools you might need, of, of how, to, how to pace yourself, uh, how to set the site up in the mornings and how to take it all down in the evenings, uh, and uh, the, the, how to use the various tools of, of any particular trade. It's just, it's just insurmountable to get that level of experience. And that's, that's sort of where I, I, when I created my academy level courses, I, I, I more or less assume that people know kind of the basics of construction. Uh, I don't show people how, which end of the hammer to hold. Uh, I assume that you have enough experience in, in hammering a nail in that, that I don't, I don't need to go to that level. I concentrate on, on showing you the uniqueness of this particular form of construction and what needs to be done in order to accommodate it so you end up with the best possible home imaginable. Uh, so you've got, some, you've got some good groundwork there. It says, a few questions I have. Do you ever let people come out and work beside you in order to, to, in order to learn your craft? Over the course of my 30 year long career, I've, I think my bookkeeper told me once that there have been 300 people who have walked in the door, uh, men and women, uh, guys as young as uh, teenagers to as old as, in, as old as I am now. And, uh, and so the, working alongside of me, clearly you would learn a, a lot uh, with regard to the, to the hands-on process of construction of the home. And of course, there's a lot more than just uh, just the, the skill level of putting a home together. There's also uh, the design level, the eye level, the, the stand back, let's take a look at what we're doing and make sure that everything is just fine as you're going through it. Uh, develop that design aspect as well, which is what I cover in the courses as well. So, uh, but right now at this particular stage in my life, uh, I've got a lot of, I got a lot of things in the pan. And I just, I, I don't build uh, every day of the week like I used to. I take on an occasional small project and I will be starting the construction of my own next home soon. I'm not certain how much logs I will use in this particular project, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna give away all the information uh, here in this video. That's, that'll be coming soon, probably in the spring, I'll reveal that to you. Uh, so, but nonetheless, I, I put him on my list, and that is that uh, anyone that's in the 
uh, handmade house guild that is signed up for my program that gives you access to all of my courses you're on my list and when it comes time for me to actually use help uh, to bring them in whether or not that's for the entire construction of the home or for just a, a day or a week worth of help uh, then then they're the ones that get the contact for that so he's he's now on my list to for that consideration um, how long do you estimate it may take a person of average intelligence or ability to go from very novice to being able to build a small home uh, m my best guess is based upon the experience that you just listed here six months doing this and six months doing something else you're already experienced with it um, the uh, I, I built uh, my first home uh, uh, I was, I was only 15 years old and uh, my I was a helper uh, to my dad my 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 father was uh, a, a suit and tie businessman who had never built a home in his, his entire life and uh, he decided that it was time to do that he wanted to build it he wanted the experience of doing it and he wanted to save the money from it and he felt he could maybe do just as good or better a job than anybody else doing it. and so he just he went forward and he grabbed me for a helper so my dad had had some basic experience probably equal to what you're doing and I had absolutely zero experience and zero interest in doing it uh, but that experience of helping my dad uh, building it is all I needed at five years later at the age of 20 when I decided well I'll build my own house that was uh, that was all the experience I had at that moment and I went ahead and built a house and it turned out amazingly well building a house is you know I don't want to use that little saying too much but it's just like eating an elephant and that is that you know it's it's such a huge monumental thing how do you ever do it well you do it one bite at a time and that's how you build a house as well it's it's one day at a time one step at a time and all you got to know is how to do what you're doing that particular day uh, there have been days as a carpenter where the next day I would be doing something complex on the job site like installing hand railing on a staircase and it had been a couple of years since I did it and I was you could just use a refresher on it and that evening I would pull out a book and and uh, just read a chapter on on installing hand railing and then the next day I knew what I was doing I you know I was ready to do it even, even if I had never done something before after you do something a few times that you've never done before before long you gain a confidence that yeah I can do just about anything if you just give me the instructions in order to do it and so and that's that's what it is when it comes time to build it don't don't feel like you ever have to have an official de degree or someone come by with a sword and anoint you uh, or give you a, a, a graduation diploma in order to be able to build your own house you're already talented enough to do that if you can if you can cut a board if you can drive a nail in um, in, in a board uh, and you can put it up without hurting yourself you're you're ready to go forward with building that house um, and um uh, says if i if i were to assign, enroll in your classes he says uh if if uh if i could gain the how do i gain the practice if i live in a suburban neighborhood only on a quarter acre lot what can, what can i possibly do uh, i always encourage everybody to if you're if you're in a if you're in a waiting period if you're not if you're not currently building right now if you don't own that piece of land and owning that piece of land is critical I really encourage you to get out there and get a piece of land but if you don't own a piece of land if you're in suburbia and you're daydreaming of this you can't beat building sheds sheds are are useful structures that you will use the rest of your life they're wonderful things to have and you need a, you need a pile of sheds when you live in um, in the countryside uh, to keep your stuff in to keep your to keep your animals and uh, uh, just they're just they're just wonderful things they even look good they look really nice if you design them well uh, and they and basically they require the same the same thing you have to build a little temper even if it's a temporary foundation four rocks in a corner uh, you have to build a floor system you have to build walls you install a door install a window uh, you do the sheathing you do the siding you put the roof on top of it uh, the, basically building a shed is a, is a wonderful way to gain confidence in order to build anything larger than if you build an, one or two small things then therefore it's just a matter of scale moving up from that particular thing and if you don't have the means to move a shed there are there are tons of people out there that move sheds for a living uh, they prefer to, to build their own and then sell it to you uh, but they'd be more than happy to come pick up your shed and take it to your future uh, land property and the prices of shed nowadays if you go to Lowe's or Home, uh, Home Depot or 
um, wherever and you pick up a shed, boy, they are just astronomically expensive. And that's, it's all because of the labor that goes into it, plus, plus material, obviously. But uh, you can save a whole lot of money by doing it. And I really enjoy building sheds um, because, because you can really see something accomplished in the day you've created something extremely useful. But also there's, there's no building codes, there's no building permit, there's no inspections. And you can really let your, let your imagination go wild in building a shed. Um, they're just, uh, because, because you're free, you're welcome to go to the sawmill and use green lumber if you want. Uh, you can build it just as, as crazy as you want to. And, and sometimes when you have freedom, that's when you can develop uh, your artistic side of your construction abilities. Uh, you, you gain more confidence in experiencing things. And one of the things that I, I've done is, is that in the Log Cabin Academy, um, a lot of people wanted to come out and they wanted to do a hands-on um, training with me in order to how to build a log cabin. The problem is that takes, it, it should take about nine months in order to learn how, if you really want to do hands-on from beginning to end on a full-size log home, and that opportunity is just not there for everyone, and it's not something I'm offering at this particular time. But if you want to learn, but if you want to, if you want to build your own log home, and you've never built a log home before, the 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 way to do it is not to leap into that particular one and oh, I'm gonna my first. This is the first log cabin I've ever built. I've never built one before, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have at it. Uh, and do the joinery on something you're going to live in the rest of your life. It makes a whole lot more sense to go ahead and build yourself a log shed, first of all. In doing that, you learn a lot about logs, about how to, how, where to get them, how to move them around, how to, how to get the bark off of them, how to hew them, how to notch them, how to space them, put them up, lift them, uh, cut them off, put the jams in place. And a log cabin, a small log cabin shed is extremely easy to move. You don't need to hire a shed mover to come in and do it. You just disassemble it and throw it in the back of your pickup truck and then reassemble it somewhere else. I have restored vintage log cabins that were more than one that, uh, that was not in its original location. And they moved it way back when. I guess they used horses and wagons or whatever, but they... Uh, clearly the cabin was not original to that site and I found where the site was up the hill or down by the river that kept flooding the cabin out. So log cabins are the original mobile homes <laughs> in a way. Anyway, uh, that's, that's it for today. Um, I, hope, I hope that handles it. Uh, try to get some experience out there working for someone else. Uh, try to undertake projects on your own property, uh, in particular building sheds. Make sure and get out and get that piece of land. Uh, how, housing prices are seem to be going down now. They go up. Uh, land prices, uh, I doubt seriously if you're going to see it go down at all. Uh, I, in the past, whenever I've seen uh, land go up, it, it never goes back down. The market never seems to correct, but it's more of a stable price. And when you're looking for land, the best time to look for it is when not too many people are looking and the price is stable, which is right now. Uh, people aren't looking because the housing market is cooling off. Uh, interest rates are going up. And you might be able to get uh, cheaper financing with uh, owner financing on a piece of land because they're not selling. But you'll find also that these th there'll be a better selection of land for you to look at because the property's not snapping up. The, the inventory is building up. And the, the sellers are not interested in dropping the price whatsoever. Uh, but they are interested in, in moving the property and getting it sold. They don't want it just sitting there. So sometimes they'll offer you financing uh, as an option or at least partial financing, put down something and, and make payments on it for a couple of years and then have the bank take over it at that particular time. Um, but, uh, but that's about it. So I hope, I hope that answers your question. And I hope that answers your question. If you're interested in building a small house, you can do it. Uh, if, if I can do it, if I did it at the age of 20, anybody can do it. There, there wasn't anybody less qualified than me to build a, a home. All it required was determination, get started on it, take it one small step at a time, and never quit. And always, always figure out, plan through what you'll be doing the next day and maybe the next week. And don't worry too much about what you're going to be doing nine months from now and how you're going to ever pull that off. You'll be able to handle it, I promise you. Don't give up on your dreams. Uh, take advantage of it. Move forward on it. It's a lot easier to build a house than it is to live with the regret of never having tried. 
Okay, that's it for this week on Handmade House TV. Thank you again for tuning in. Come on over and see us at Handmade Houses. And we got all kinds of stuff with a tremendous amount of free material over there. There's one page on testimonies uh, that are all of some of the people that have written in and uh, to me and expressed their, their appreciation and love of my courses that I put together. It's so much more. I, I do enjoy doing YouTube videos, but it's but they're they're all just little they're all little taste of the soup. There's no recipes or or, or hands on. Watch me uh, do this. I promise you, you'll love it. It's a it's a tremendous uh, holiday present. Uh, consider for your loved ones, and don't forget it's li lifetime access to it. Uh, you can watch it as many times as you'd like. And um, anyway, that's it for this week. You guys take care. Uh, talk to you next week. Bye now.